Booker Tove, we're going to start with today's Daf Yomi, which is on the bottom of 84B, four lines from the bottom. We're going to discuss today's Daf Yomi, which is Ksubos Pehe, Ksubos 85. So Yemer Bar Chashu, Masuk Bezuzi Behu Gavra. So Yemer Bar Chashu, so he was owed a, uh, he was owed he owed, he was owed money by a, spe, by a specific man. He he was he had a note, and then Shacha, this man died. Veshavik Arba, he left behind a ship. So Amalei Lishluche, so Yemar Bar said to his agent, Zil Tafs anyway, go grab that boat for me. Azal Tafs. So the man went, he grabbed the boat, and he went to grab the boat. Pagu be Rav Papa, Rav Papa met him, and Rav Huna prayed to Rav Yeshua. They met him along the way. On the way, they said to him, "Ato fez ba'achol b'makom shachav ba'acherem." You're you're an agent. You're trying to act on somebody else's behalf, but this this other person, he's not. He doesn't just owe your guy. He also owes other people. We am Rav Yochanan. Ato fez ba'achol b'makom shachav ba'acherem. Rav Yochanan taught that if you want to act as an agent and grab something for. Uh, Creditor, when the when the debtor also owes other people, well, kind it doesn't work. On top of pay hey amidalif, so so tafsinu inu. So Rav Papa, Rav Huna, Brady, Rav Yeshua, they were owed money by this person. So once they got rid of this agent, the agent of Yemar, they themselves grabbed it. So Rav Huna, Brady, Rav Yeshua, Rav Papa, Mimuach Mulchay, Rav Papa was acting like this sailor. Uh, she says, from Jonah chapter one, getting us ready for Yom Kippur, that the Melachim is a reference to the sailors. And Rafuna Bray Ashla, he was pulling on the string. So there was a tug of war. Mar Amar Ana Kanina Lalakua. One says, I grabbed the whole thing. Mar Amar Ana Kanina Lalakua. The other one says, I grabbed the whole thing. Pagabu Rapinhas Brahmi. So Rapinhas Brahmi said to the, saw them both fighting. Amar Rabbish won't Amar Travayu. Who should see Boron when Nachum or Shasaram? He says, Neither one of you has it. It goes to the heirs because when can a creditor see something from a deceased debtor? Only when it was in the public domain. And this was this was not from the public domain. So neither one of you has the right to it. It goes to the heirs. So Amrule, they said to him, No, they said it was on the uh, middle of the river. We are grabbing it from the middle of the river. So it was in the public domain. Also coming to Rava, Rava said to them, Amaru Kaki Khaviri, Mishaki Glimi de Inchi, you're like white geese. You're throwing off the coats from people. It means say you're acting improperly. Because Akhiam Rav Nachman Rucha Tapsua Machayam Rav Nachman said, When are you able to seize the property of the deceased debtor? Only if he sees it while he's alive. Otherwise, even if it was in the public domain, it goes to the creditors. It goes to the heirs. Avimi braid the Rabbi Avo, Avimaski Be Zuze. Bechuzai. So Avimi, the son of Rabbi Avo, he owed money to some people in Chuzai. Shadrinu biyad chama bre de Rabbi Avo. So he sent it. He sent it with an agent. Chama, the son of Rabbi Avo. Maybe it was his um, nephew because they're both the son of Rabbi Avo, Avimi and Rabbi. So some changed the girsa to Avua. Rabbi Avua, so some have a different gear, so, but anyway, so Azal Parinu, so we, so the agent went and he paid the creditor, Amr and then he said to the creditor, Abu Ishtar, give me the give me the contracts, I can take it back to Avimi, and he said to him, Amr Sitra, and he said, no, I'm not giving it back to you because I had another thing on the side with him, an oral loan. And that's what this was paying back. That's all this is paying back. The, the written loan we hasn't paid back yet. So Asla coming to Rabbi Avo, Amar Lai, he came to Rabbi Avo, Rabbi Avo said, Sadi de Paritinu, do you have witnesses that you paid him back? Amar Lai, oh, he says, no, I don't have any witnesses. So he says, he says, well, actually, since he could say something like this never happened, that you never paid me back, since he could have had a stronger claim because if he never paid me back to begin with, he could also now say, I have a, it will be believed to say he has something else on the side. So the Gemara says, with respect to paying off the uh, agent, 
does does um, does Rabbi does does Avimi need to pay Chama? Uh, because the, or does Chama, the agent, need to pay back the person who sent him on because he messed him up? So with respect to the agent paying, my what's the law? So Amar Vashi Chazina Ni Amar Le Shakel Shtar Amav Zuze. We see what was the language he used when he hired this person to be his agent. Did he say to him? Did he say get the get the note and then and then I'll give and then give him the money? Well, if he said that, then Mishaim, then the agent has to pay because the agent gave him the money first and only then asked for the note. But if he said Hav Zuze Shakel Shtar, if he says give him my money and then take back the note. Well, we'll show him. Then he doesn't have to pay because uh, he did exactly what he was told to do. But the Gemara's conclusion does, that's not true, says uh, the Gemara. Either way, the agent has to pay because I'm away because the, the person who sent him out, in this case, it was Avimi, the person who sent him out could say, I sent you out only to help me, not to mess me up. There was a woman So there was a woman who she used to, she was holding as, as a deposit uh, a bag full of notes, of IOUs. Also, Yarsham Katabile, but then the person who gave her the bag died and the heirs came and they wanted this bag back and she didn't want to give it back because she said you still owe me my 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 money that that's the reason why i'm holding these as a deposit so they wanted to take it back she said to them she said i took this while he was still alive and so therefore it's like you take it from the heir while he's still alive and so therefore i have possession of it i don't have to give it back to the heirs also came the rabbi nachman they came to in front of him nachman amarwa he said to her, Do you have witnesses that he made a claim from you that uh, while, while it was still alive? Do you have a claim? Do you have witnesses that he tried to get it back while it was still alive? Well, he was still alive and you didn't give it to him. So she said, No. So, so Rav Nachman says, So since he had already put it with you as a deposit, you don't, it's not considered like you seized it once he died, you, because it's like you seized it after his death. And so it's like you seized it only after his death because while he was alive, he never tried to get it back because he understood it was a deposit with you. And so therefore you have to give it back now. There was a woman who was obligated to bring an oath to make an oath in the court of Rava. Amra lay Bas Rav Chista. So the daughter of Rav Chista, who also is Rava's wife, she said, Yadana ba de chashuda So she said, I know that this woman is is, cho, is, is chashuda. She suspected you know, about oaths. We don't trust her. We don't trust her. She lied. She's a liar. So Avcha Rava Lushvua. So Rava said, okay. And then what we'll do is we'll reverse it. We're going to say the woman who comes to court is not the one going to take the oath to defend herself, but the one who's trying to get the money from her will take the oath, will flip the oath. That's what we're going to do. So Zimnin, but then another time, So one time they were sitting in front, he was sitting in front of a Papa Ravada Bamasna. I saw who starring up, and then there was there was a contract that was brought in front of them. I'm like, Papa, I done made the star up Papa says, I know that this is a a this this note is is was already paid. I'm away. So Rava said this time, Ika Inish Achrina Bade. Do you have another witness supporting Bade Demar? Do you have another witness supporting you? The Papa says, Lo, I don't. I'm way. Afu Gav Ika Mar Eid Echad Rav Kumhu. He says, Well, even in that case, even though you're you, even though you're one witness, it's nothing, because even though you're a distinguished person, we we don't we're not going to ruin a contract on the basis of one witness. So I'm way. Rav Adi Ramasna. Rav Adi Ramasna wants to defend Rav Papa. He says. Do you, do you just believe the daughter of Rav i.e. your wife? As, as, and even though she came as one, well, why don't you believe Rav Papa? He's a great rabbi. Don't you think he's going to be as good as the daughter of Rav Chista? So Rav says, 
So he says, no, the daughter of Avchista, I know her basically intimately. I know her really well. Ishtol Kagufo, her husband and his wife, they know each other. So Mar will Kimwe Begave, but at wrap up, I don't know as well. So therefore, I'm not going to ruin the contract on the basis of his testimony alone. Amar Papa Hashu Amar Mar Kimwe Begave Milsi. So Rav Papa says, well, now that Rav has taught us that this concept, you could say, I know this person really well, is a real, is a real thing. Could go in Abba Mari Bere. Well, if that's the case, like Abba Mari, my son, the Kimwe Begave. If I know him so well, on that basis, Karana Shtara Pume, I would tear up a contract uh, on the basis of his testimony. So Gemara says, Karana Sakadaitach, will you really tear up a contract? You think one witness is enough uh, to uproot a signed document from the one who's holding it? You To take away money from somebody else, you need to. So he said, would you really, really tear it up? I would ruin it. Uh, and I would say that you can't collect with that contract. And I wouldn't actually tear it up, but I would just ruin the potency of that contract. There was a woman, the Yai of Shua Beidina. There was a woman that was, she was Chayev, an oath in the court of Rabbi Barabai. Amarahu, Ahu Baldavar. So the person who was suing her said, come with me and make us take an oath, Bimasa. Come take an oath uh, in, in this city. Um, it's not 100% clear whose city. Is it the city where he was from or the city with, where she was from? I guess you could read it either way. You could read it. Uh, you can most likely read it either way, but most people read it that it was he wanted her to go to her own city because then she would be embarrassed more. Uh, so now it's so he, he said. So so that's how most people read it. Asher the Mirsafaya, maybe she'll be Mirsafa, she'll be embarrassed there, and she'll 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 be afraid to take the oath in that city because she'll be embarrassed. And she'll admit to the to the debt. Amra lahu. So she said to the court, So she said, write for me a note in advance that I came to the court and I was exempted for, by the court with my oath. So that immediately upon taking this oath. I won't need to come back here and do everything again. He said, write it for her. Write for her this note. Since you come from people who are mimua, Rashi says this means from the house of Eli, that they are filled, that they live a very short life. And so that's what it means. And Rashi says that mimua means hunchback, that they, they are truncated, that they don't live like normally other people. So they're hunchbacks. So he says, since you came from people who have a truncated life, I'm riso muli muliya. So you say, you're saying words that are incorrect. Ha'amarava, hai ashrata de dayane, de mirtava mikmei, so, because Rav said, this ashrata, this is uh, ashrata the shtari, like to basically to, we had this kium shtaros earlier in our tractate at the very beginning, that the courts would ratify the contract that if it was written before the witnesses signed it, before the witnesses testify that this is their signature. They wanted to get ahead in advance. And so they notarized it in advance. So it's disqualified. Why? Because it looks like it's false. You're also, it looks like it's false to write that she, that she swore if she, and she still didn't swear. So, and it's not true. Uh, 
Now, with respect to a get, if you found a get, a divorce, in the trash, and then it would have the same names of the husband and the wife, and then and it was signature, and you gave it to her, it's okay. And when, where the Rabbanan who argue with Rameir, they only argue with respect to Gite Nashim by a divorce. There, because there you require the get written for the purpose of, of her, you know, specifically for this woman, but by all other contracts, the Rabbanan would agree with her mayor that you can find the contract that was just written and it's valid. Let's say you have a contract Rabbi Yochanan said, if you have a contract that you borrowed with it and then you paid it back, you can't go and use that same note to reborrow because they had a lien on it and then you already waived that lien. So now if you're going to reuse it again, it's not fair to the person whose property has the lien on it because you already waived it. But that would indicate time at the name called Shibuda, that the whole reason is because you don't want to defraud the person who has the lien. Avo Amilchne Keshikra on the top of 85b, but well, Kashinim, we're not concerned because it looks like it's lying. So therefore, you should be uh, you should be able to write this document for this woman. Who gavra the afkid shav marganita ditzayri besadina ditzayri besadina bei rabbi miyasha barbara yerushu shulalevi. There was a person who came to the house of rabbi miyasha barbara yerushu shulalevi. Uh, after he had died, and this person said, "Look, I deposited these seven pearls, and they were wrapped up in this in this specific type of handkerchief." So Shach Ramiasha, the low pocket Ramiasha died, but he didn't tell his heirs who this who these pearls belonged to. Also coming to Rabbi Ami, so they came to Rabbi Ami for a din. Amrei Chada, he said, first of all, the Adana Beibu Rabbi Mishaya Barbara Rabbi Shuba Levi Do He said, first of all, I know Rabbi Miyasha. He didn't have any money. There's no way he would have his own pearls like that lying around. Road, Hakayav Siman. And this guy comes and he gives a simon. It's a sign that it is. We only say that when he wasn't accustomed. This person wasn't typically around the house. But if he was typically around the house, then we're going to say, you can say that another person deposited it and he just saw it. There was a person who deposited a silver cup in the house of Chasa. Shach of Chasa, or a pocket. So Chasa died and he didn't, or a pocket. And he and he and he didn't give instructions as to who's going to get the money. Also, Kami do have now do have Nachman. I'm only a Donabe the same idea. I know this person's not wealthy. And second of all, this person was coming and he gave a sign about the cup. And we only say this when this guy with, who was making the claims wasn't a real member of Bechas's household. In a if kid. If he typically went there, we could say that somebody else um, had a deposit of and he just happened to see it. And then he was using fraud. Oh, so another case, third case, Dimi. So this time this person left a silk garment, Raj, he tells us, in the house of Rav Dimi, the brother of Rav Sifra, Safra. Shach of Rav Dimi bought a pocket. Rav Dimi died before he told people whose garment it was. Also coming to Rabbi Abba, came to Rabbi Abba. Amar um, Lo. So when he came to Rabbi Abba, he said, he said, Chada di Adana be Rav Dimi do Amid. First of all, I know Rav Dimi is not wealthy, and second of all, Voda Kayav Simana. Second of all, this guy gave a sign. Vo Amar El do Aragil da Ayav Benafikos. And we always say this when he typically wouldn't. Go to the house of a royal dav and afikos. Some emei neshachrini have to be um merzechazi. Same exact story. So why would you need three stories? You could possibly find slight distinctions between the stories. One is the pearls, 
One is a silver cup, one is clothing, so you can possibly find some mistakes. Somebody says, all my possessions go to Tuvia. Shachiv, and then he died. Also Tuvia. Then Tuvia was, um, a man named Tuvia arrived and Amr Rabbi Yochanan Harai bought Tuvia. So he says, Tuvia has arrived. So Rabbi Yochanan says, this is the same Tuvia. Amr Tuvia, but also Rav Tuvia. But let's say the person who said, all my assets are going to Tuvia. Let's say he said Tuvia, but the person who showed up was Rav Tuvia. It's the same thing then. We say with Tuvia. Amar will rav tovya, lo Amar. So he said, so then, so, so rav tovya came, tovya Amar will rav tovya, lo Amar. So he said, he said, let tovya come, but he didn't say rav tovya, so it's not the same thing. The inish, the gizbe, ha gizbe. But if it was a person, this rav tovya was somebody he was accustomed to, then fine, then that's why he called him tovya, because you don't call your best friend rabbi, you know. So he called him, he called him Tovya instead of Rab Tovya. Also, Shnei Tovya, let's say two Tovya showed up. One was a Shachain, Vitam Chacham. One was a neighbor and one was a Torah scholar. We can assume that he left the money, Tam Chacham Kodem. We can assume he left the money to a Torah scholar because people are more likely to leave their money to a yeshiva, to a Torah scholar, than to a neighbor. Karo v'talmud chacham. Let's say one was a relative and one was a Torah scholar. Talmud chacham called him. The Torah scholar comes first. We assume he left the money to the Torah scholar. Ibayu is shachim the karo of my. Let's say one was a neighbor, one was a relative. Tav shema who 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 we assume he left the money to. We say tov shachim karo me'ach rachok. So he said, <coughs> and we say a be, a, a good neighbor is better than a brother who is far away. So we say, and so therefore, we're going to say under those circumstances, uh, so, we, we, so we assume he, he, he left, he intended to leave the money for his neighbor. But shneim karovim or shneim shechayin, and once they both are close and both are neighbors, or shneim chachamim, or both of them are scholars. So what do you do? Two people show up named Tuvia to collect the assets. Mara says, under those circumstances, the Gemara says, Shuda the Daina, that we let the judges decide. What does Shuda the Daina mean? Uh, so Tosu says, local Pirisha Kuntras. Tosu says, I don't agree with Pirisha Kuntras. The uh, that the that who understand it to mean that the judges have to see what the person who intended to do it how he intended. I don't agree with that. Rabbeinu says the judge has the right to give it to everyone, and he brings a proof. From the end of from the end of Gita. So Shudu the Daina, according to Rashi, means the judges have to figure out who the person intended to leave it to. Or Rabbeinu Tam says, no, the judges can give it to whoever they want. I'm going to tell you something beautiful. He says, this is what your father said. That was Shmuel said, one who sells. A note to his friend. He has a friend, he has a note of what's a million dollar debt against this person, and he sells it to somebody else. The Chazer Macho. So Ruben, so Shimon owed Ruben a million dollars. Ruben had a note on Shimon, and Ruben sold this note to Levi. Let's say he sold it to him for half a million. So now Levi thinks he can go to Shimon and, and try to collect the million dollars. But now Ruben waives the debt that Shimon had borrowed from him, even though he sold the note. The Chazer Machol, so so Shtar, so Hamochah Shtar Chavu Chaver, the Chazer Machol Machol, he's allowed to waive it. It's a valid waiver because Rashi's explanation, which is very much discussed amongst the commentaries, is that the 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 borrower Shimon in this case could say to the purchaser of the note, i.e., Levi, 
Rav Baldwin did I had nothing to do with you. I borrowed money from hey, I don't I borrowed money from Mumin. I didn't borrow any money from you. Rafiwo Yoresh Mochel. And even if he's the heir, the one who the one who sold the note was Ruvain, but the one who's waiving the rights is Ruvain's son, it's still considered waived. But Shmuel would admit that in a circumstance where the Machnesh a woman who brings in a note into her marriage, that note is considered a Malu property. And so, so let's say she sold the, the note, or she, she, let's say she brings in this note and then she wants to waive the, the person, the debtor on the note. It's not waived, because she has the same rights to it as her husband. Her husband has the rights to the payroll, so she can't, she can't waive it there. So Shmuel would admit in that circumstance. Okay, we'll stop here. God long picked this up. Tonight, stop Yomi. Hold on.